Four-time Tour de France winner Chris Froome failed a urine test during his Vuelta a España win in September, but says he's done nothing wrong and will provide, quote, whatever information is required. The British cyclist had double the allowed level of a legal asthma drug in his system, but states he followed the team doctor's advice when he took an increased dosage. Cycling's world governing body, UCI, notified the team Skyrider of an adverse analytical finding from a urine sample taken after stage 18 of the race. Froome has suffered from asthma since childhood. In a statement, he says he increased his dosage when his symptoms got worse at the Vuelta and welcomed the decision to examine the test results. Froome became the first Briton to win the three-week race around Spain following his fourth Tour de France victory in July. The failed result doesn't mean Froome is suspended from the sport. And now, with round-the-clock updates from Reuters journalists, here are today's top stories. An upset in Alabama sends shockwaves through Washington. The Super Bowl's smaller cousin in China. This is Reuters Now. If we can flip a state like Alabama, then everyone else can. Democrats revel in a dramatic upset as they win a Senate seat in the Republican stronghold of Alabama. I'm Andy Sullivan in Montgomery, Alabama. This conservative state has just defied President Donald Trump and upended conventional wisdom by electing Democrat Doug Jones to the Senate. I'm here at the election night rally of the Republican candidate Roy Moore and what was a party quickly turned into a wake. This election is sure to send shockwaves through Washington and the nation, showing the limits of Trump's hard-edged populism and giving Democrats new hope that they can regain control of Congress in next year's elections. Moore started the race as a heavy favorite despite his controversial past, twice kicked off the state Supreme Court for defying federal orders. But the race was upended when several women said he dated them or sexually assaulted them when they were in their teens and he was in his 30s. That didn't stop Trump from endorsing Moore, but many prominent Republicans in the Senate said they couldn't support him. Democrats rallied behind Jones, a former U.S. attorney best known for prosecuting former members of the Ku Klux Klan. He hammered more over the allegations and worked hard to mobilize African-American voters. We have shown not just around the state of Alabama, but we have shown the country the way that we can be unified. More supporters blamed the loss on opponents within the GOP, like Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell. We, we see Mitch McConnell. We, he's playing with these elections. He's reaching into these our states. Moore himself refused to concede. When the vote is this close, then it's not over. But Trump congratulated Jones on Twitter, saying his Republicans will try to win the seat in the future. Jones's victory narrows the already slim Republican majority in the Senate. After he's seated, they will only have a 51 to 49 majority. This is sure to embolden Democrats. They figure if they can win here in Alabama, that means they can probably win in other unlikely places in next year's elections as well. I'm a supporter of Doug Jones. I was not very hopeful. This is a very Republican state. So when the early returns started coming in and more was ahead, I was at a watch party for Jones. I left, went to get food, went to a bar, and just occasionally would check in on my phone. I just recently saw that Doug Jones just pulled off an upset win in Alabama, and I am absolutely ecstatic right now. I think they destroyed a good man, so I'm feeling bad for Roy Moore because Roy Moore was a good Christian person, and I believe he would have been a great senator. So fe feeling upset for Roy Moore, absolutely. Feeling hurt for Roy Moore, absolutely. Feeling hurt for our country, absolutely. Think back to the previous step in this election, right? Uh, Donald Trump supported Roy Moore's opponent in the primary, Luther Strange. He lost. Then Trump switched to Roy Moore. He lost. If Trump is losing in his deepest of red states, in his Republican states, then the swing states, the blue states. This should send an ominous warning to Mr. Donald Trump. This is not your country. We understand that we, the, the American public, voted for Donald Trump. He won. He won his election. And now his agenda is being blocked fully by Mitch McConnell. We understand that. We're not, we're not fooled by that. Um, you now they're playing with our elections to make sure that the president's agenda, and by the way, when they attack the president's agenda, what they're doing is they're attacking the American people. We chose Donald Trump to be our president, to be our leader. 
and they're, they're basically attacking the American public. Does that make sense? Donald Trump Jr. is set to be back on Capitol Hill Wednesday, meeting behind closed doors with Senate investigators looking into Russian interference in the 2016 election. The Senate Intelligence Committee staff is expected to ask the younger Trump about a June 2016 meeting at Trump Tower he attended with Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner, former campaign manager Paul Manafort, and a Russian lawyer who promised negative information on Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. His appearance comes only a week after Trump Jr. drew fire from Democrats for his testimony to the House Intelligence Committee. Ranking member Adam Schiff faulted him for refusing to discuss a conversation he had with his father, President Trump, about emails dealing with the meeting at Trump Tower. The White House said it believed Don Jr. was on solid legal ground in declining to answer. Special counsel Robert Mueller, who is also probing Russia's role in the 2016 race, has indicted Manafort on charges related to his work in Ukraine. And former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn has pled guilty to lying to investigators about his contacts with Russia during the presidential transition. We've said from the diplomatic side, we're ready to talk anytime North Korea would like to talk. And we're ready to have the first meeting without precondition. Let's just meet and let's, we can talk about the weather if you want. We can talk about whether it's going to be a square table or a round table if that's what you're excited about. <laughs> but can we at least sit down and, and see each other face to face? And then we can begin to lay out a map, a road map, of what we might be willing to work towards. I don't think it's not realistic to say we're only going to talk if you come to the table ready to give up your program. They have too much invested in it. And the president is very realistic about that as well. Turkey is criticizing what it says is a feeble Arab reaction to Trump's decision last week to officially recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. President Tayyip Erdogan is holding talks with world leaders in Istanbul on Wednesday to try and drum up an international coalition to solve the issue, inviting leaders from more than 50 Muslim countries to agree a response. Erdogan has mooted implementing sanctions against Israel and accuses some Arab countries of being scared of angering Washington. As the term president of Organization of Islamic Cooperation, we invited leaders to an extraordinary summit in Istanbul and we will meet in Istanbul. I hope that we will give a strong message. On Monday, Russian President Vladimir Putin visited the Turkish capital, agreeing that the U.S. move was destabilizing the situation in the Middle East. Turkey says Arab states must stand up to what they're calling Washington's, quote, I'm a superpower, I can do anything mentality. The Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, is in town for Wednesday's emergency session and will also be hoping to rally support as is the Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, who says his country supports a new uprising against Israel. Until now, there's been plenty of fiery language from Arab states, but little talk of what can practically be done to advance Palestinian aspirations for their own state, with East Jerusalem as its capital. The Palestinians will be hoping for concrete action. South Koreans are swept up in Bitcoin mania. That's got Seoul officials scrambling to rein in the craze as regulators around the world warn of a bubble. One group of traders in particular has set off alarm bells, students drawn in by Bitcoin's explosive surge this year. On Wednesday, the government held an emergency meeting to try and find a solution. It's weighing a ban on miners opening accounts on cryptocurrency exchanges and a tax on capital gains from trading virtual coins. Reuters' Dahi Kim reports from Seoul. Uh, there definitely is a Bitcoin or virtual currency boom among college students. They are usually in their 20s uh, and the fact that anyone could start investing with just little money probably attracted them. I heard that some even abandoned their studying and part-time jobs as they uh, believe they could make much more money by investing in Bitcoin. 
Some are gathering in groups to study about cryptocurrencies and figure out best possible investment strategies. After Bitcoin jumped 21 percent in one week in November, the prime minister said he was concerned about students joining the trend, creating what he calls a serious pathological phenomenon. Officials say the new measures to tackle the trading craze will be announced as soon as Friday. Friday night lights were scarce in China a few years ago, but with young Chinese getting hooked on the NFL, semi-pro American football games are getting popular and fast. Eight years ago, there were only two adult teams, one in Beijing and one in Shanghai. Now, there are dozens across the country. The Shenyang Hunters are one of those teams, here to face off against the Shanghai Street Cats, who've never lost a game. I'm Anita Lin Shanghai at the City Bowl Final, China's very own Super Bowl. For the players here, this is the biggest game of their lives. But unlike in the U.S., none of the athletes here are getting paid. Instead, they end up having to pay to travel to games like this one and cover the costs of equipment and facilities. Since football won't likely become an Olympic sport, it doesn't receive any government support. Most of the hunters had never even seen an American football match before a few years ago, let alone play a game. Their first season was in 2014, and now they've got around 70 players from age 16 to 44. Even after all the hard training, the hunters lost to the Street Cats 12 to 24 in the final. But with any luck, they'll return to the City Bowl next year. You're up to date. For more, download the Reuters TV app on your mobile or streaming device.